Today, we really just wanted to go over some basic functionalities of Navigate. Like I said, I'm in my EMT Premier course. However, the capabilities and functionality of Navigate are the same. Um, no matter what course you're in, it's just the content is different. Uh, so I thought maybe the first thing to go through is setting up a quiz. And this can be done either within a pre-built chapter block or if you want to create a block just for quizzes or assessments, you can come down to the bottom of your screen and choose the plus sign box. This will create a brand new box for you down at the bottom of your screen. And then you can click and drag it all the way to the top or wherever you'd like really in your Navigate course. Um, and then you can label it assessments, quizzes. Um, I will create a quiz in my, one of my pre-made boxes, however. Feel free to do whatever works best for you. So I'm going to add an activity or resource. I'm going to choose the Navigate to Assessment. That is our test generator directly within the program. From here, there are a number of parameters that you can uh, add to your assessment. The only required one is that you do have to give your uh, assessment a name. You can set up dates of availability of when you'd like for the uh, quiz or assessment to be available, a date when you'd like it to shut down. If you'd like to set up a time limit of once the student starts the exam, how long they have to complete it. You can set up the number of attempts you'd like to uh, set for this assessment. Now, if you do multiple attempts, you will then have to dictate to the computer or the program you know, once that time expires, how would you like the program to handle the attempts that haven't been worked through? And if there's a submission grace period, so if you want to say, you know, the, the close date is, uh, you know, Friday, but you'd like there to be one day grace period, maybe you deduct some points if a, an assessment was handed in on that date, you can do that as well. If you set up categories and weights in your uh, grade book, you can plop that assessment right into that desired category. It defaults to grading at the highest grade, but you can choose average grade, first attempt, or last attempt as an alternative. Now, the program defaults that all of the questions are shuffled, as well all of the answer choices within the um, assessment or, or the question are shuffled as well. If you'd like to change that, you're more than welcome to. As well, the navigation is set for free navigation where the students can go forward or back. However, if you only want them to go in, in only forward, you can set that up as well. You can change the type of feedback or amount of feedback the students receive. You can add a password or an IP address. Um, you can add a delay between how many, you know, when they do their first and second attempts, if you want them to space things out. You can add customized feedback if you'd like. Once you've set in all those parameters, and remember the only parameter that is required is giving it a name, you hit save and display. Once the settings are all set, then you would hit edit assessment. And this is where you will be able to pull the questions from our question pools into your desired you know, uh, assessment. So we have quiz questions, we have a pre-made final, a pre-made midterm, practice activity questions, and an optional test bank questions. Just note that even though these are quiz questions, it doesn't mean you can't use them for a test. You know, go through the questions, see where they best fit for your students. So once you choose your desired chapter and your desired question pool, you're able to now actually review the questions. If you hit the magnifying glass, that'll allow you to preview the question before adding it. If you hit the little gear icon, that will allow you to make any uh, uh, desired changes to the question, the feedback, the answer choices, the correct answer. I'm not going to make any changes, so I'm going to hit cancel. Uh, and then there is a copy button. So this will allow you to keep your original question and then create a copy where you can make those, assess, uh, those necessary changes that you see fit. As well, if anybody on the phone 
uh, creates their own questions. You can do that directly in the program by hitting create a new question button. We provide you with all of the templates. Uh, you will be required to populate the question, the answer choices, the correct answer, and the feedback provided. The computer will um, grade your questions, um, however, not the essay. The essay will require the educator or the instructor of the course to come in and grade that, but everything else is graded by the program. If instead of choosing question by question, you just want to do a, you know, a random poll, again, go to the, the chapter, go to the pool that you'd want to pull from, hit the number of questions you randomly want to add to your assessment, hit add to assessment, and boom, now I've got my 10 question quiz and I can go about my day. I'm going to unmute and see if there's any questions about creating an assessment before moving on. Hey, everybody, got any questions about creating an assessment? Got it. Cool. If an individual changes the information within a question, does that change the database or does that just change your particular question? I would hate to change everybody's score value or something like that. That's a good question. No, it just changes your, just your questions within your class. Good question. All right. Any other questions before we move on? We're going to go jump into the ebook next. No, I'm Is good. Is there a way to take the test or the quiz prior? Do you have to, to create quiz? each oh. exam every time? Wait. Okay. Two questions there. One was a gentleman and one was a, a nice uh, lady. Uh, all right. I'm going to go with the gentleman's question first just because he finished it finish this question. So if you want to do a custom exam to generate it, if you, let's say, do all these custom exams in your course class, you want to have the exact same course created or, or provided to your class of students, we could copy over your class. So that way you don't have to generate it each time. All right. Then, okay. I'm sorry, okay, the other the lady who asked the question half ask the question once you create a question or does it automatically go into the database and everybody can see that question or is it just you that can see that question just you and any of the instructors that have access to your course that you've allowed to have access to your course they can see the questions but not everybody else i okay. have a question yes ma'am i have a question too hello I'm here. I'm listening. Yes, I have a question about the grading. About if you could go back to the question banks. Sure. Bear with me. I'm going to go back to my chapter two quiz. I'm going to go back to the edit assessment. All right. I'm back to my question, my quiz. Okay. All right. So uh, when I create the questions over here in the question bank, mm -hmm. and I want to. Um, I want to change the points in the little box, okay? Um, so like say I have, I wanna make it 2.5 points per question, for example. Um, is there a way I can populate all those point box at once? Because right now I'm having to go in individually put in my point value and click save and then go to the next one, put in my point value, click save and go all the way through. Is there any way I could do that just once and have them all populate? So that can be done um, within the grade book. If you want, I'm, what is your name? I can email you a step-by-step -step on how to do that real quick. Oh, that'd be good. Uh, Terry, I'm Terry, T-E-R-I. Terry, what's your last name? Gammon. Trambley, T R A M B L I E. I'll send you a commentary once I'm done with this, if that's okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Cool. Terry, anybody else about quizzes before we jump in to something the next topic? Okay. Is it possible to take the quiz prior to giving it to our students? And then if we find something that we don't care for, 
go back and modify it before it actually gets assigned to our students? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So once it's, once it's created and you love it or you, you think you love it, go back to your lesson and you go to your chapter two or wherever you created the quiz. Go to chapter two and take the assessment. Does that answer your question, Linda? Yes. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, this is this is Rich uh, from Georgia. Um, got a question about uh, adding a short answer question, and it states uh, that we can add that question uh, that includes some wild cards uh, as far as the grading or add individual questions. How, how does the wild card work, and what is the wild card? I actually don't know. Um... Those are the best questions to ask. Thank you for giving me that. No, that's fine. I apologize. I'm going to investigate no. fun, and I will reconnect with you. Is that okay, Rick? That sounds wonderful. Answer questions. All right. Anything else about creating assessments, questions? As far as creating the assessments, if we want to drop those into, say, a um, lost browser like uh, Respondus, is there an option for doing something like that? So the only, so in, and I apologize, I breezed over it. The only thing we currently have, whoops, it's in the edit settings. We currently have a pop-up blocker in browser security here. So that way, once the student starts taking an assessment, they can go to another window or another tab within their within their view. And is that option available from the assessment tab that you just showed by chance? This was in the edit a settings tab. So once you're in the quiz, just to review it, once you're back in your quiz, I went to edit settings and where did it go? Oh, here, right before the custom feedback can be added. I see that. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. I heard, I thought I heard one more question. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Scott. Scott okay. from Florida. Hey, Scott. Hi, um, I've got a quick question um, with regards to your assessment. Is there a way to export uh, the questions that are already created for an assessment, either a quiz or a test into another learning management system? Is there an easy way to export that information or no? What system are you looking at? Uh, so we uh, use a DTL, uh, D2L system, uh, desire to learn system. Um, and basically what I'm trying to do is because the school is moving towards a different security system to incorporate uh, or make, make sure that the students aren't otherwise cheating. Um, basically, it requires us to move the items from a third party into our learning management system. So even though we have assessments, quizzes, tests already created in Navigate 2, now we're having to face the issue of moving our tests into our established learning management system. So I'm wanting to see if there's a way to interface that. There's, so these are pre-built assessments, correct? Yes, ma'am. They're already established in Navigate 2. Yeah, there's no way of exporting them currently in their pre-built, other than saving them in, as a Word document. But um, the only other option is we do provide our test banks in different LMS formats. And I know there's one for D2L, but it wouldn't include your, it would include the questions, not the pre-made assessments. Thank you. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, yep. My name is Ralph. Hey, Ralph. Uh, hi. Um, so two questions. Um, one, when I have an already, I, I, we call them mastery exams. We'll call it a, uh, an assessment when it's already made. Uh, is there any easy way or a way to transfer that already made exam 
into another uh, class within JBL, an easy way. And the second question is, um, is there any way to take, when you take your assessment and make a paper copy of it, is there any way to, to save as on there um, and, to, and to save that so I can save it as a PDF and send it to uh, such as my medical director? So two two part question. First part is email your your representative. Going to be where your the name of your assessment, what course ID it lives, and what course ID you want it moved over to. And my yes, team can actually make that make that move for you. Yes, ma'am. The other part of it, when you go to print your assessment uh, after you've made it, uh, my recommendation to you would be to copy it into a Word file. That way you can do any kind of necessary formatting you, you need. Um, and you would save that as a PDF or print it as a PDF. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. That work? Okay. All right. Anybody else? I don't want to rush us over this topic. Right. I'm gonna I have one quick. Yes, sir. Uh, regarding the, the test questions for all of your Navigate, do you have a way to transfer them into canvas so we have our our test banks for each of our textbooks are created in different file formats if you email your rep that you need uh you know i'm just saying emt for canvas we can get that to you does that help answer your question Yes, thank you. Because yeah, we're using all of our fire books and all of our EMT books, and we're using Canvas with the LMS at the college. So it'd be nice to get all that in. Yeah, email over your rep, and we'll be able to help you with that. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Everyone's good. We're going to go to the ebook now. So I'm going to unmute. I'm just going to mute everybody, not to be insulting, but just so we can move forward, and then we'll, let, we'll jump off again to ask more questions. So. Mute. So after you, you know, uh, under your lessons is where you would go and find your our ebook. Now our ebook is a highly interactive resource. If you have students using the traditional text, and you have some students using the ebook, if you want to bring them to the quote unquote same page, what I would recommend is always reference the headers because. While the content is identical in the ebook, there are so many points of interaction. There's media built in directly into the ebook. The pagination has adjusted a bit. So I just say, you know, keep things simple. Just say, hey, everybody, chapter four or chapter, you know, come to the introduction and everyone will have the same content. Um, like I said, our ebooks are highly interactive. Students are able to make highlights, they can make notes. You can also leave notes for your students. So if you see the note, very important. Save your note. And then if you hit the sync button, all the students, um, your note will be deployed out to their ebook. So when they come to this part of the book, they'll be like, oh, there's a note for me. And then, you know, they'll be able to read your note. As the students are highlighting and leaving notes, all of this information is populated into what we call their my stuff. And I've worked with a lot of students who have told me that what they'll do is, is they'll you know highlight the core material. So that way their my stuff kind of builds for them a condensed study plan, focusing on that core content and the content that they feel that they need to really focus on. Uh, and then they can print it out. The other components of our, you know, our ebook, they can they can leave bookmarks. There's enrichment opportunities. Again, these are points of interaction. Look at this figure, watch this video, work through this animation. Um, and then there are points, uh, knowledge checkpoints. And I see these as, you know, little self checks for your, your students to just ensure, okay, I read a couple of pages. Let me just make sure that I actually comprehended the material. While these questions do not flow to your grade book, they do flow to an ebook uh, analytics report. And I'll jump into that report. Uh, even though I don't have students, 
um, you know, once your students are using this material in the eBooks analytics report, you'll be able to see, you know, when the students are logging in, how long are they using the eBook for, how well are they doing on these knowledge check questions. And this will be a guide for you in, okay, is this a helpful resource or not? Should I be, you know, steering my students to this? There is also an e-reader app if the students do choose to read um, the ebook on their phones. Uh, they could go to their, you know, uh, iTunes store or their app store um, on, you know, either a, an Apple device or an Android device and download the ebook reader. Uh, and that way they can take it wherever they'd like. But to get to, um, just to point out where to get that ebooks analytics report, if you go to reports, it's listed here under the grader or the user report. And again, that'll just show you for the students who are using your ebook, you know, give you some insight into their performance and engagement. The other piece of the puzzle of the ebook is that every chapter, if you're using Premiere, will have an ebook quiz. This is a pre populated quiz. Um, if the students are using the ebook, it'll automatically populate at the end of their chapter. If the students are using the um, traditional text, they can just come in the ebook chat, uh, the ebook quiz here. And what will end up happening is this is a good check. I always think for the students. Okay, I only read the chapter. How much information do I did I comprehend? And from the feedback that they receive um, from this quiz, they're really able to hone in on their specific needs as they're going through the additional resources within uh, the Navigate course. So I'm going to unmute again. If anybody has any questions about the ebook or the ebook quiz, feel free to ask. Now, a question: Is there a way to get the ebook quizzes and the chapters, like lectures, onto the calendar? Um, the calendar is really meant for assessments and assignments. If you Plug in a date. Do you know how to plug in dates around the, the different materials? I mean, I could show you how to do that right now. Please, can you show us? Sure. All right. So, under where, I mean, this could go for any resource, by the way, not just the ebook quizzes, but any resource listed here. If you want to set a date, again, of when you want something available or due for your students, you could edit assignment. So, for here, you would add a row because we're going to add a restriction. And we're going to add a date. So if you want a, a start date, you know, they can have access starting from today. And we're going to give them access until, you know, let's say we'll give them a month. That will allow, you know, your students to have a window of time to access this material. And again, for assessments, if you add this, this will, you know, affect the grade book. And hit save and return. So a little bit different though from the, the assessments that we populated earlier, because when you do a custom assessment, that's when you actually, um, the view looks a little bit different. Uh, and I can send you a handout. Was that Michael McGinnis that asked that? Michael? Yes, I just, I, I know my students get kind of lost and I even know I send them an email what where they should be at. Sometimes it's nice to, have it pop up on their calendar when the lectures. Hey, you need to start the lecture on this date. So that's why. You, I'm going to send you a handout that walks you customizing your calendar and um, populating the um, oh and notifications. So that way, the, the program can automatically notify your students. Awesome. And notifications. Any other questions? Hi, this is Darren in Idaho. Hey, Darren, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Hey, can we make any changes to the ebook where it would uh, where it would change globally in the class? Add a to say tying hires on a ladder that would take the students to a video on how we want that not tied. Wait, I'm sorry, Darren, you were cutting in and out. Can you ask that one more time? Yeah, can we make any changes globally to the ebook? Like add a hyperlink to a video, say of tying knots for a hired kind of thing? I will need to ask about adding videos to the um ebook. Hold on, I'll write this down. Can you make 
Wait, I'm, I'm sorry. There's a people talking. Keith, is that? I hear a Keith. Wait, I'm sorry. And you keep cutting out. Hey, Darren. Yes. Darren from Idaho. Let me just make sure I get your last name so I know. R A S K O F, right? P, P F. P as in Peter, F as in Frank. Ah, ah, see, I knew I spelled it wrong. All right, I will get back to you about that. Hey, this Thank is you. Pat. This is Pat up in uh, Minnesota. Say, you know, when we go in to change, like two guys before wanted to put dates in for assignments for their calendar. So when I call my rep that I want this course cloned, so I get a new course ID, is all of that going to be transferred over? Because if it does, we would have to individually go in and change the dates, or how does that work? Yeah, so everything customized, when you do a copy, Everything that you have added, videos, animations, tests, all that customization gets copied over. The only things that don't copy over are your dates and your students. The dates will have to adjust no matter what. So, so that does not get copied over. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Any other questions from the oh. This is Tom in Wisconsin. Hey, Tom. Uh, uh, let's see, if a student buys a hard, uh, a paper book, do they get the ebook with it? So the ebook is uh, dependent on the Navigate package that is provided uh, or set up by the instructor. So the ebook is included in the Advantage, Preferred, and the Premier package, not in the Essentials. But the Essentials package, which does come with the book, lectures and outlines. No digits. Please re-enter your access code followed by the pound or hash sign. Hey, Keith. I hear Keith Buchanan. Hey, um. Your rep sends you the navigate package breakdown, if that's okay. To enable audio controls, please enter your audio pin. Yeah, we're hearing everybody. Pound or hash sign. I need everybody to get on. You do not have a pin. You're not hearing you. You're going to have to mute it. Hey, uh, I muted everybody, but. Keith Buchanan, I, I know you're you um, something's going on. If you could mute yourself when I unmute everybody, so I could hear everybody's questions, that would be super. I just don't want to miss everybody's questions. All right, I'm gonna unmute again so we can. I just don't want to miss any questions. Everybody there? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't want to lose anybody. All right, Thomas, I'm gonna have your rep. Um, I'll have Kathy or McKenna email you those Navigate packages, okay? So that way you'll know exactly, you know, when the students get. Okay, them. thanks a lot. You're welcome. Any other questions about the ebook? Okay, we're gonna move on then. Awesome. So the other piece of the puzzle, which I know a lot of our um, you know, programs have been moving to, especially in this climate due to, um, you know, everybody being uh, home, are those interactive lectures. So if your rep provided you with access to the lectures, it will look somewhat like this. It'll say interactive lectures, and then every chapter will be listed. Um, when you go into your chapter, it'll just say interactive lecture. However, if you're using a premier course like mine, the interactive lectures are within the, the resource suite. Um, these are full lectures that mirror the entire curriculum of every chapter. And the reason why so many programs are utilizing these right now is that students can use these to really get that foundational knowledge under their the medical module. Every chapter has full audio. There's no play button. If there are links to walk through, a video to watch, an animation to work through, the students have to do the work before moving forward. 
Uh, like I said, there is audio. So again, before they can move forward, they have to listen to the entire audio piece. You as the educator, you have a little bit more free navigation. You can go back and forth. But the students, before they can move forward, they will have to do any required work for each of the slides. The audio component is really trying to break down the core concepts of each of the, uh, each of the chapters. But like I said, there's also points of interaction because we're really trying to support the needs of different types of learners. Oh, I'm seeing that there's somebody in the chat. Oh, there's a lot of chat. Um, so the other core component of the lecture that a lot of programs have been um, telling us about is they're using this as kind of their check off for their virtual lectures because the students are able to get their full um, content or didactic portion. Now, if you are hosting a virtual meeting kind of like this, you know, you're able to pop this up in your virtual meeting and walk through the material with your students. Um, you can, you know, have an overview of the content, answer any core questions that the students may have. But in your grade book, if I'm jumping around a little bit, you're actually able to see, you know, when the students come into the lecture, how many times are they working through each lecture, uh, how long are they spending in the lecture. So it'll give you a breakdown. Oh, and also I forgot to mention, my apologies. There are knowledge check questions in the lecture as well. Those are different than the ebook, but again, it's really meant to be a check for the students. All right, I worked through some material, but did I actually comprehend it? Um, and those do flow to your gradebook as, as you see here. So this is one of those tracking capabilities, this data report, and making sure your students are actually doing the work. I'm going to unmute again just to see if anyone has any questions about the lecture, but also if you're utilizing these currently, I would love to hear if you have any best practices that are working for you. So I'm going to unmute. All right. Hey, everybody. Any questions about the lecture? California. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Jim from California. Hey, Jim. How are you doing? Oh, sunny. Oh. I, I, I have a I have a question from uh, <laughs> uh, I I have a question from the last uh, section uh, regarding the ebook. If we highlight something and uh, as the instructor and leave a note for them, uh, that's good for the students that I have now. But if I want to continue that same style for the next class. Uh, next set of students, is that, do I have to do it all over again or can I save my, basically save my notes? Nope, your notes get saved over. Everything co gets copied over other than your students and the dates. So for the next uh, student uh, class that we have, I will be able to use that. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hey, this is Terry in Washington State. Hey, Terry. Hi. Um, I had a question. You mentioned the virtual meeting. Um, can you expand on that a little bit, please? So virtual meeting, I, I'm just in the last couple of weeks working with a lot of programs who are trying to host virtual meetings as one that we are doing right now. And there are uh, a lot of different ways to do it. We do offer in Navigate, not to jump around, but in Navigate, we offer um, a chat room. So if you go, please. Come on, activities. Gotta give it a second. So there is a chat room that you can host. It is type based, but it is a place where all of your students can come in and ask questions. Uh, I will be honest, a lot of programs I'm working with have been um, using this in coordination with our discussion forums. This is where you can post open ended questions and the students can answer them so that you see them or so that they can see each other's responses and um, uh, they can respond to each other. If you're looking for a virtual meeting with um, video, however, and audio, um, I know a lot of programs have been looking into Zoom. Uh, it's not, I think it's $15 a month and you can have up to 100 people in your meeting and um, 
The meetings can last 24 hours. Now, I'm not a Zoom representative. We use Zoom here, and I will say I'm happy with Zoom. Um, but those are, you know, just some ideas, Terry. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning how to, learning how to use Zoom with uh, my family right now. So that should work. Awesome. 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 Any other questions, anybody, about um, ebook? Yes. On the um, or did the, the, the we were before with the with the chapters. Here, when you were talking, about, well, when you were talking about going through where they have to go through and um, go through each section before they can move on. Oh yes, a lecture. Here we'll jump into a lecture. So, can you set that? Do you have to go in and set each chapter if you want them to be able to move through one chapter quicker than another chapter, or <laughs> not have to go through each? So the lectures are self-guided. The students will go through them at their own pace. You can set up the, um, of when you want the students to start, a, you know, have access to the lecture and when you want them to do. Is it something like that? Or can you, like, they have to, you have to do that on each chapter, or can you set that up for the, the whole, all the chapters? in terms of well they're automatically assigned in the students they have access right off the bat so if you want to set up dates you would have to do that for each individual chapter okay all right thank you any other questions about the interactive lectures i have one question yes sir uh it's, it's kevin from new york um, we see the, um, the what, what's the lower version, the uh, advantage. Okay. So we don't have access to the lectures. Um, I don't know if you or anybody else that's that's on here would have a suggestion, um, because obviously here in, in uh, we're in Westchester County, right where the all the breakout has happened uh, here in New York. So we're not meeting at all for our programs. Um, so I'm just looking for ways to keep my, my class is still open. We just don't know when we're going to be able to meet again or when the state's going to allow for state testing. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out how other options using the advantage, uh, to keep my students before we lose them completely before they can test out. So Kevin, I can uh, I'll connect with Eileen and you after this, and we'll get you set up with the lectures. Is it EMT? Which level is it? it it's EMT basic, yes. All right. I'm going to connect with Eileen. We'll get you set up with the lectures, so that way they at least get this component. They can work through it. Okay, great. Awesome. So this is this is Pat again in Minnesota. Can you put my name on that because we use Advantage also? Yeah. Or, and, and um joy no 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 uh emt sorry i don't oh yes emt basic and emr okay emr and emt yes if anybody on here currently using our stuff but doesn't have access to the lectures please email your uh your rep i'm gonna say your instructors sorry email your reps about the interactive lectures okay and we will get everybody set up uh, Great. Thank you very much for that. You're very welcome. Really, anything we can do, uh, you know, we're here to help. I guess I'm going to leave the last 15 minutes for questions because I usually like my instructors to kind of navigate these meetings because it's about you guys and I want you guys to get the information that you need uh, and it's not about me. So if you any questions or anything you want to review that I haven't done so far, let me know. Can you just go over the uh, attendance and how we can utilize the the attendance? Because again, now that we're we're not meeting, it's very hard to keep track. And again, using the advantage, um, how I can check that students are doing work if possible. So, or, so or to keep oh, yeah. attendance. So I would definitely for attendance. 
once you've got the lecture, this is just my two cents, but feel free to use the, the report feature in there because it'll track and tell you when everybody signs in, how long they're using it, how many times they're going in there, their quiz, or, you know, their score on the questions. Um, but yeah, if you have an attendance record, I would recommend, I mean, you can plug it into each chapter if you want to do it that way, that way, you know, every time the student does the chapter, or you can do a box like this and create something for attendance, but I'll just put it in my chapter one for now. If you go in here, and I will say that the attendance is, I, I would recommend that it's something you set up and you track, not your students in this climate, only because you do have the option where the students can go in here and say, yeah, I showed up. But, you know, if you're going to have a virtual meeting like this, I can go through my, my roster while my attendees and I can check off who actually showed up. Um, so it's under the add an activity or a resource. I'm sorry, I completed that super fast. Um, I mean, if you, I'll go back again. I'm sorry, that was so much. <laughs> so within the box, go to the add an activity or a resource link and go to attendance. And this is what, we, again, we track your students going through the program. Um, you can dictate whether you want it for points or you want it to be on a pass fail fail and you hit just save and display once that's set up then you would go in here and you would add the dates of when you want to meet with your students so your session start date how long you're going to be meeting with them time wise and then when you when your class is going to end so you make sure just make sure you have create multiple sessions and create something like this one per chapter. I think it's easier if you do one multiple sessions in one. Um, and then you can choose when you're meeting with your students. Add session. Oh, that's right. I have a question for date June. There we go. Now, this is oh, this is Sunny. Can I make a suggestion? Yes, Sunny, please. Okay. Um, what my class is doing for, for you guys that are wondering about attendance is that we on our normal class day of Tuesday, Saturday, I've set up a chat session. And so everybody is required to attend that chat session. It's for us, it's two hours. We would discuss whatever chapter we were going over. People can answer questions, ask questions. And I take my attendance from that. I can see who has logged in. And at the end, I can see how interactive they were, how many questions they posted, uh, how many times they responded. So that might be something that you also could look at for attendance and for interactivity with your students during this time that we're all in self-isolation. And you're using the, the chat feature here on Navigate for that? Yes, I am. I have a box that I set up that says class chat and each class day is a different chat session. That way, if they have questions or want to refer back to what we discussed, they can look at the history in that day's class. Oh, that's, that's a great idea. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, you're so much, Sunny. That's awesome. I'm going to share this. Other I have a question. Hi, this is Miriam from New Jersey. Hey, Miriam, how are you? I have a question. Hi, good, thank you. I have a question regarding flashcards. Is there any way to view if the students are doing the flashcards? Because I've been assigning flashcards to them daily. No, the flashcards are really meant to be a student independence tool for them to kind of go through it on their own. My apologies, Sam. Okay, okay, thank you. Anybody else? Any other questions? I mean, if, if after our time today, you have a question, email your rep, and they can forward it on to us. Um, you know, my entire team, we're about in, instructor success. And more than ever, we want to make sure y'all are feeling comfortable, supported, you know, whatever you need. Whatever you need. All right. Well, if, if that's it today, uh, we're going to host, we host this every Monday at 11.
Wednesdays at 11 and Fridays at 2.30. So please join us. We're, like I said, here to help. Thank I would you. Like to say, I would like to say something just in uh, closing here. Yes, this, yes. Is, this is Terry from Washington again. Uh, so during this time that I'm sure all classes have been um, moved to online only um, in the country. And um, I just want to say that JB Learning has been very, very helpful and supportive and very um, available and accommodating. And I just want to thank you guys for all, all your work and all your help. Um, and again, you did send out that email to everybody, at least I got one, that uh, you're just going to uh, give us the um, interactive lectures and also the ebook. I uh, we just have the essentials package, and um, we got you gave us the ebook also just to help support our students. And I just wanted to say thank you very much. Well, thank you for all you're doing. I mean, really, uh, we wouldn't be able to survive this without all of you. So whatever we can do, I keep saying to my educators, I know I'm just a little piece of the pie, but whatever we can do, just ask. Well, I also want to say thank you. I've used this on the students. I thought it was fairly easy to navigate. Awesome. So speaking from the student side, I, I want to say thank you. But now that I'm instructor, now that I'm an instructor, I'm learning from this side. Oh, I, I'm stressed that we are able to support all of you, especially during this time of, of just, you know, unknown and you know a little scariness it, it totally is so even if you need a hug or a laugh or anything call us we're here <laughs> i'll make you laugh somehow <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you everybody I, i'm really appreciate you know ending on that positive note like i said if you need us email us call us we're here to help thank you well, thank you, everybody. All right, we'll try and enjoy the rest of the day. And like I said, if you need us, we've got this going every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Enjoy thank the day. you. Thank you. Thanks. Are the classes repeat Monday, Wednesday, Friday? Are they all the same? Uh, yep, we're just going to go through the same stuff. But if you got more questions, always join us. I mean, I'm a big advocate. Of, you know, let's review what you need me to review. I don't know. Can, can you go back through one more time? Like I, I took some notes, but I'm in trying to, to do, to create um, an assessment of my own yeah. and going back through like how to have the computer just pull the questions. Like if I don't want to sit and pick out all the questions, how do I have the computer pull the questions? Like I went into the GYN chapter because that's what we're doing tonight and mm -hmm. was just looking to see how to do that. So you're good at making the test, like building out the settings. You just want to look at pulling the assessment questions yeah i went through and got the settings okay it's just um like i said the screen that i have up is having me go through to pick each question but is there a way for me just to say i want 30 questions and let it populate it itself so at the bottom of the uh, test generator is it another drop down if you choose the chapter of your choice and then just pull 20 questions, you know, and hit add to assess to randomly pull 20 questions. All right. Um. So Hope, this is Rob from Wilton. If uh, you're asking for more questions that are in the bank, how does it pull questions for that? Wait, what do you mean, Rob? So if they're... So if you're wanting 50 questions, but there's only 20 questions in that bank for that chapter, does it does it only give you the 20 questions or will it give you more? Oh no, it'll give whatever's available in that pool. So you can pull a 20 from here. Oops. And then if you scroll down, you go to the next, here's 10 more from that chapter. So you it depended all on that that the pool number, which is in the parentheses here. So you can only pull the max that's in the pool, but then you can go to the other pools for that chapter and pull from there, if that helps. Rob, there's three different areas you can pull questions from. 
which is confusing. No, I, re no, I, I understand that part. I just was seeing if uh, if you use that function, um, that it'll if it'll give you or it just pick it from somewhere else on its own, or you have to go into each bank and pick. Yeah, I'm sorry, I got to go into each bank. No, thank hey, you. Was curious. Hey, this is Joe from Brooklyn, New York. Um, do the questions repeat themselves from bank to bank, or is each bank a different set of questions? Each bank, each pool is a different set of questions. So, like the quiz questions are different than the optional test bank questions, are different than the practice activity questions, and which are also different than the final and the midterm too. So, three pools and then two separate pre-made tests. So, the final is a separate set of questions from everything else. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh, actually, the midterm. What chapters does the midterm cover? Uh, my understanding is the first 20. I'll have to actually, let me confirm that for you. I'm sorry, Joe. Now that I'm, I want to say a number, but I don't want to say it out loud. It's 20, <laughs> sorry. 24. No, 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 but I want to confirm myself. No worries. Not, not your fault. I'm totally on me. I want to say 23, 24, but I'm going to confirm it and I'll show over an email. Is that okay, Joe? Sure, absolutely. Thank you. You're very welcome. I have one more question. Yes, ma'am. How often do you update your test banks? Like, will they change maybe possibly from semester to semester? Or how, you know, like how often do they get updated? So they get updated, brand new questions, you know, are updated with every new edition of the text. Now, if there is a, if someone disputes a question or they find an error, we will update that information. So, I mean, that's the beauty of technology that can happen instantaneously. Um, but yeah, new questions are, you know, developed with each new edition. Okay. Because I had another test bank that I was using and they would update questions frequently so my question was how often do you update i mean this app testing component is updated but our publisher instructor test bank that comes with the textbook is you know those are you know the same questions with each edition okay how close are these questions with national registry they are meant to mirror national registry. That it's okay. Here. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. One more quick question. You got it, Rick. All right. Thank you. The uh, uh, ebook quizzes. Yes, sir. Are they pulled from these test bank uh, questions that we have access to, or are they different test bank? Different test bank. So different questions. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, can we assign the ebook chapters to the students as well uh, as a as a work assignment the actual chapter yeah you can assign anything what you would just do is do uh, again plug in those dates okay we'll go to the chapter <coughs> go to the chapter go to the ebook click on the little menu and go to edit settings and that's where you would make those adjustments okay um, on that screen that you just had up there, the assign role. Yes, When you do the uh, the edit for the. Oh, assign role goes back to groups. If you want to set up student groups. Gotcha. Okay. Let me know. And I can send you that, Kevin, if you want on how to do that, if you want to set up groups. If you could, that would be great. Got it. Hello, Mark from. Pennsylvania. Hey, Mark. How are you? I'm well. I must have missed it. Uh, I had a question regarding the usage to be able to show that our students are using because we do the hybrid, of course. So, um, student login usage, I guess. So, you can pull student usage in a couple of different ways. You can go into your reports, and depending on if you, you know, if you're using the lectures, I just 
today, I mean, past couple weeks, it's all been about the lectures. The right. lectures will tell you when someone signs in, when they've, you know, how many attempts they've gone through it, how long they've been through it, and their score on those knowledge check questions. So that'll indicate whether or not they're using this um, new resource. Oh, whoops, wrong button. The insights report, and I'm not going to pull it because I don't have any data, and I'm, or I can show, I mean, the insights report will give you, come on, computer, will give you the lifetime of Navigate of when students um, are using the different resources, if they are using the resources, when they're using them. Um, so this will kind of give you a gauge on student uh, performance and engagement in the program. And then we have this other little nifty report that seems to be a fan favorite. It's our logs report. And this will provide you, so if you, from your home page, go to your course admin menu, go to um, reports, and go to logs. I'm going to choose myself because I'm the only one in here. But hypothetically, all the students who have registered for the program will be listed. You choose the student you want to take a look at, and this will show you every single thing the student has done in the program. I like that one. Right? Everybody is a fan favorite. Everybody loves this. It'll tell you when they logged in, what did they do, how long were they in it. I mean, yeah, this is this is the big brother report, and I mean that in a positive way. Well, I teach a mixture of high school students and um, adult students in the evening, and this will this will help me with my administrator for my school students. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, I like this report. All right. Anything else, guys? All right. Well, like I said, join us. Oh, yep. Jennifer, can you put your email address up there? I, I have the J Troop part, but what's the uh, at? Yeah, rest me, of it? Uh, oh, what? I want to go do my Zoom meeting. Let's see. I'm going to put it in the chat. Is everybody good with that? Yes. Everybody loves me today. Love you guys too. ESGlearning.com. So now everybody's got my email address. Email me whatever anybody needs, really. I'm here to help. I've got a whole don't hmm? is is this is there a written document for like creating a test in JB Learning or is it or not? No, no, thank you, Diane. Diane, which which state are you in? Maryland. Maryland, you got it. I'm gonna email it to you. It just helps me look look up your email in our database, but I'll send over a handout on how to create assessments. Okay. Still looking for your email address, Jennifer. It didn't come up in the chat to everybody? Yeah, it's there. Oh, okay. I got it. You got it? Okay, cool. Well, thanks, everybody. I enjoyed our time together. Join me again. This is, this is Tom from Milwaukee. Uh, I still don't have it. I asked for it, and I and I don't have it. Okay. Your email address. Okay, so... I'm going to give it to you over the, I'll give it to you verbally then. Ready? It's J T R O U P at T S G learning dot com. Okay, I got the J Troop app and the learning. What were those three letters? TSG, as in Public Safety Group. PSG. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. When we're looking at the insight. Hey, Jennifer, um, Keith. Keith, you get my question. <coughs> Hold on, I thought I heard somebody, somebody was asking, asking a question about the insights report. Yeah, with the insight report, uh, when, uh, with the ebook, if they have the, um, uh, if they have it downloaded onto their iPad, will that show up, or is there any interaction between those two? So they have to be connected to the internet. If they are dis so on their on their e-reader app, they do have the ability of disconnecting. However, for any of the data to to transpire, they need to reconnect to the internet. 
Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, Keith, I think that you're up next. I'm sorry, um, my, my audio is cutting out, so I was kind of trying to listen with my phone and my computer, and I guess it's the internet here at the firehouse, but um, Keith from Virginia, I have a couple questions going back a little bit. Um, I typed them in the question thing and raised my hand, but I don't, I don't know if that's working or not, but um, back going back to the $15 fee, is that a one-time fee? Does everyone pay the fee or just the instructor? Is there a charge every time you use that fee um, for using that group? So that's Zoom. That's a uh, Zoom question. My understanding yeah, inside the J. But I would go check out Zoom. I don't. I don't know too much about it. I mean, well, my company uses it, but uh, this is Rob from oh, California. Was, see, that's what my chat was Zoom, that, now. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> Zoom will be a monthly fee. Oh. But there you go. Thanks, Rob. Rob from California. Yeah. Yeah. It's a monthly fee. Um, you can do a free chat or a free meeting, but it only it's only like temporary, and then you have to reapply and all that kind of stuff. Thanks. Okay. Hey Jennifer, how did you get the do you currently on? And then how do you, Jennifer, how'd you get to this log? Oh, just uh, the same Monday, Wednesday, and Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Keith, you keep jumping out, but, but hold on, Joe. I'm not going to forget about you. Let me just finish up. Let me just, Keith, are you still there? Email me, Keith. Go we'll through anything. All right, Joe, to get the report, the best report ever. My audio could keep cutting in and out. I think that's my internet connection. I apologize to everybody, but no, that's okay. I was listening to it on the phone and watching your thing on the computer, so. My final question was, are the sessions the same Monday, Wednesday, and Friday every week? We, I mean, it's really up to the educators who join. I mean, we'll go through anything. I just picked a couple of things to go through that, you know, seem to be hot topics, but we'll go through anything you guys want to, you know, talk about. All right. Keith, if you need to, though, email me. We can always chat one-on-one. -on -one. Joe, to get to the report. Okay, thank you, Jen. You're welcome. From your home page, go to your course admin menu, go to reports, and go to logs. Thank you. You're welcome. Jen, I just, it's Kevin again. I uh, I already emailed Eileen, and she already sent me the information. Thank you very much. Boom, I love it. Awesome. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, everybody. Well, I do Mondays, so come on Monday. Forget Wednesday and Friday. I was teasing. Come <laughs> you can. <laughs> we are hey, here. Jennifer. Yeah. This is Josh in West Virginia. Uh, just a quick question. Yes, Will there be a link to view this again? I, I'm at work and we were on a call and I missed most of it. Yeah, I am recording this, so um, I will share this out. I'm hoping this is my first time actually with GoToWebEx webinar. Um, but my understanding is I'm going to get a whole list of all, everybody who joined and I'll be able to share the link with everybody. And then you'll also get my email address. Great. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Jennifer. It's been a great help. Oh, you're so welcome. Really? If anything comes up, email me, call me. I just want to make sure everybody feels good about you know, everything going on. Is there a way to delete a quiz once it's been created? Yep. So once you're in here. You go back. So I'm in. I created a quiz in chapter two. So if you go, okay. go to your chapter or wherever you put it. Um, okay. My chapter two. I'm going to go find my quiz. And in that drop down menu where the edit settings in, so it's delete. You just delete it. Okay. Hang on. Okay, so I went to the chapter. I went to the chapter two, and then wherever you put the wherever you put the quiz. I mine was in chapter. Yeah, I got. I went to the chapter where the quiz is, and then where are you getting? Like I'm not seeing anything where I can edit. So next to the chapter, or next to your assessment, right? Whatever you named it, should be a little blue arrow. Yeah, there's not. 
Hmm. That's weird. I can see it on yours, but it's not there on mine. Diane, after this, there should be you may need to connect afterwards then. Speaking of deleting uh, deleting a student from the grade book who's dropped, how would you do that? This is Rob from California. Two things, Rob. First, you gotta go to your, your learners tab. Go to your learners tab, find the student, the student in the correct course ID. And you're gonna them and you're gonna unenroll them first. And then go into your roster. Once you go, go to your roster, which is um, your users, and go to enroll users. And hypothetically, when you have your students here, they're gonna be X's next to um, where it'll say student for everyone. Just make sure you hit the X on that specific student. I'll send you a handout, Rob. Now, do they still get to keep access to the digital office since they pay for it? Um, what ends up happening is they get access to like an um, an open enrollment course. So not your course specifically, but they'll have access to the re some of the resources since they pay for it. Uh, do you need my email? Uh, has this been the Rob that I owe a phone call to? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I owe you a call. Yes. Rob, I'm, I've been uh, typing in the questions in the chat box too, so I'm my name is in there also. Awesome. Yes, I don't need your email. I have your information. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Jennifer. Yes. So, um, speaking of delete again, how do you delete a placard? Oh, okay. So in the placard, make sure you have the one that you want to delete highlighted in blue. And then once it's highlighted in blue, scroll to the bottom of your page and hit the, the minus button. Okay. All right. I didn't know it, I didn't know it needed to be highlighted in blue because if I click mm -hmm. the minus button. Uh, it just goes like into a shadow. It doesn't just totally go away. So the hide part will will hide it. But if you highlight it, yes, hit that negative button, it will delete. No. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. How do we close a course out at the end of the program? Um, it you, I mean, it doesn't close out. Students have a year. If you mm -hmm. set, you set an expiration date for you, email us and we'll set the expiration date for you if you want it shorter than a year. Okay. Um, there's also a, a section I don't know where it is where you have at the the end you can click on the student and it's pass fail skills for the individual students. You know what I'm talking about? No skill. Um, I think it's under when you you just have the uh, under the individual learners, I believe. At the isn't that at the beginning before you actually log into a course, right? And you have the learner, all of your past learners. I think it is. So and you click on that. Okay, I'm in my learners tab. Right. So where you just were, you just had something up there. I pull somebody up. Mm -hmm. Like here is on the right there where you have grades, course completion status, skills. That's just where you can kind of mark them off in the program. Okay. And the course completion status there where it has the dash or the grade there, does that pull automatically from our grade books? It will, yes. And it, again, if you want to have a set course completion date, we would we would enter that in for you, so that way this information populates. Okay. Well, I do. Right. Oh, yep. 
I apologize, everyone. I'm going to have to cut us short only because I have another meeting at 1230. But you need me, email me. And like I said, we've got this Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So join us. Really, we want to make sure everybody's feeling good about our resources. All right. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. You too. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Jennifer. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>